The Tesla Cybertruck is one of those products that people either love or they hate. It's controversial to say the least, and the reason for that is simply because it is different. It threatens the status quo, and the majority of people don't like that. But the other side of the argument sees that disruption of the status quo as an opportunity. It could move the needle in a direction that makes life better. The trick is being able to identify which new ideas will change an industry for the better and which ideas will make change for the worse. What's interesting about the Cybertruck is that, contrary to what a lot of people would believe, this truck was not designed specifically to be ugly or offensive. It's not just a massive troll from a billionaire edgelord who plays too many video games. The appearance of the Cybertruck is nothing more than the product of a first principles design that set out to create the strongest, lightest, most durable, most powerful, most versatile, most efficient, most cost-effective, and longest-lasting pickup truck ever made. So a lot of different factors had to come together to make that happen. Today, we are going to break down those engineering techniques that went into making the Cybertruck what it is and why those are all so important to the final design. Obviously, the most striking feature of the Cybertruck is the body. It's long, wide, and pointy in ways that we aren't used to seeing in a vehicle design outside of a video game or a science fiction movie. So why does it look like that? Well, again, I can assure you that this is not a troll either, because given the design fundamentals set out for this truck, there is literally no other way that it could look. We'll have to start off with some material science. The body of the Cybertruck is made from a 1 8 inch thick sheet of 300 series cold rolled stainless steel. This is not a typical material to build a car. This is totally unprecedented. There was the stainless steel DeLorean of the 1980s, but those body panels are significantly thinner and softer than the Cybertruck material. As we saw from the sledgehammer test at the Cybertruck launch event, this thick, cold rolled steel is incredibly strong. And because the steel is so hard, it can't be stamped into a curved shape like a regular automotive body panel. It would literally break the stamping machine. The only way to form this grade of steel into a shape is to fold it. So what they do is first score the metal using a laser, and then they are going to put it into a machine called a press brake. This is going to have a long, narrow die channel that sets the angle that the metal will bend at. And then there is a punch tool that will hammer down on the sheet of metal with a narrow edge that will concentrate all of the energy exactly where they want the steel to bend and press it into the desired angle. The manufacturing advantage to this process is also huge. Compared to traditional stamping, the Cybertruck doesn't need a bunch of custom dies and stamping machines, just the press brake with the desired angle. So that's why the Cybertruck has no curves, because it would be physically impossible given the material choice they made. But then, why use such hard steel? Modern truck design has strayed pretty far from the heavy gauge steel bodies of the olden days. The latest Ford F-150 uses an all aluminum body, a very lightweight, but also very soft metal something that has further detached the pickup truck from its intended purpose as a work vehicle. Try tossing a steel toolbox into an aluminum truck bed. The GMC Sierra has been experimenting with using carbon fiber and fiberglass composites in their new bed designs. Everyone else is going light, while Tesla is going heavy, or are they? Now we bring structural engineering into the fold. Your typical pickup truck is what they call a body on frame design. The frame is the structural heart of the truck. The body and the bed just sit on top. They do not contribute to the structural integrity. The tensile strength of the pickup truck comes primarily from two boxed steel rails that run from the front to the back, and they are tied together at a few points in between by lighter metals. So when you load the truck up with cargo or tow something heavy or go around a corner very fast, there is very little weight distribution. It's all concentrated on those two beams. That means that the entire cab and bed of the truck 
are dead weight. They don't contribute to the structure. So they actually just become more payload that the frame has to carry. One step up from that is the unibody design. This is how basically every vehicle that isn't a pickup truck is made. In a unibody, the lower frame and the upper body structure of the car are tied together. They are integral to the structure of the vehicle. The upper body of the vehicle needs a strong structure anyway to deal with crash impacts and rollovers, right? So we might as well put it to work. So instead of the frame carrying all of the load, that energy is distributed up into the internal structure of the vehicle. So now the roof and the floor and the trunk are all doing their part to contribute to the overall strength of the vehicle. And that means that no one part has to be particularly strong on its own. And that completely eliminates the need for high strength steel girders inside the vehicle. And that means that overall the body and frame will be much lighter. But even the unibody still has plenty of dead weight to carry. That's the outer skin of the vehicle. The way cars are made now, the body panels are either plastic or super thin aluminum. There is zero strength or structure to these panels. They exist only to channel air around the vehicle and make it look pretty. And because the low grade metal is susceptible to corrosion and because of the customer's obsession with aesthetics, that entire body needs to be painted which is even more dead weight. Think about it. How heavy is a can of paint? Pretty damn heavy. And it also adds a massive amount of cost and production time to the vehicle. And even with the paint, the body is still going to corrode and rust out in a decade or two. So this is a problem that Tesla had to solve to accomplish the goal of making the best pickup truck in the world. How to go beyond unibody, how to make a truck even stronger while also making it more simple and less expensive at the same time. And the solution to that was the thick sheet of cold rolled stainless steel, a body material so strong that it would actually carry more weight than it added. So now instead of the structure of the body being inside or an endoskeleton, the structure is formed on the outside or an exoskeleton. That means Tesla can delete all of that internal structure from the body and the Cybertruck body is an empty box, but it still has incredible strength. That strength comes from the material science, but it also comes from the shape of the structure. So again, why does the Cybertruck look like that? Well, if the metal needs to be folded, then we should try and fold it as few times as possible. That means making a triangle and a triangle just happens to also be the strongest shape in geometry. If you look at the shape of the Cybertruck and then you look at a railway truss bridge, you're going to notice a hell of a lot of similarities. That is not a coincidence. The whole point of a truss bridge is that it distributes the weight of the freight train across the entire structure up into those steel triangles. It is the strongest way to make a bridge that is also lightweight and simple to construct. Same goes for a pickup truck. So to recap that, yes, the stainless steel is heavier and more expensive than aluminum, but it is also much stronger and that allows Tesla to delete the steel box girders from the traditional pickup design, while at the same time also deleting the upper body structure from the unibody design and deleting the entire painting process thanks to the incredible resistance to corrosion that is offered by high quality stainless steel. They also have a body that can be formed mostly out of one single sheet of stainless steel. It just needs to be laser cut and bent a few times by the press break. Where things really get nuts is when you start to factor in Tesla's other manufacturing advancements that are already in production today, their giga casting process and structural battery pack. The GigaPress die casting machine is a manufacturing process that Tesla uses to form large sections of vehicle frames from single pieces of aluminum. The machine injects molten aluminum into a die mold, which solidifies into one large yet complex frame component. Tesla is currently using this for the rear quarter of all Model Y vehicles. So the entire frame from the wheel well to the rear bumper is a single aluminum casting. And on some variations of the Model Y at Giga Texas, 
they are also doing the same for the front quarter. So the entire frame from the wheel well to the front bumper is all one casting. By making this change, Tesla has eliminated hundreds of steps from the manufacturing process of the Model Y vehicle. Hundreds of robotic arms that would weld and fasten together hundreds of little stamped pieces to create a frame are all replaced by a few giant casting presses. And the same is going to be true for the Cybertruck. In fact, an unprecedented casting machine with 9,000 tons of clamping force had to be specially designed and built in order to make the giant casting piece that fits under the bed of the Cybertruck. Because the exoskeleton that surrounds the truck bed has the strength of steel formed into triangles, the underbody is perfectly fine to make out of aluminum. And the strength of the two together will be much sturdier than a traditional pickup truck frame. The structural battery pack is the final piece of the puzzle. This is another manufacturing advancement that Tesla has already put into use on certain variations of the Model Y at Giga Texas. They use their new 4680 battery cell, which is a very wide diameter cylindrical battery cell with a solid steel canister. They sandwich those batteries between two sheets of metal and they fill the voids in the middle with a solid urethane foam. So they get a solid brick of metal that is filled with batteries, and that is what connects the front and rear Giga castings together. This is very important. If we go back and remember how the traditional pickup truck carries its own body as dead weight, well, a traditional electric car carries its own batteries as dead weight as well. The frame and the batteries are separate. The structural pack integrates frame and battery into one component, so now the vehicle isn't carrying the weight of the batteries which are very heavy, the batteries are carrying the weight of the vehicle. So when we add all of this together, what we're going to find is that the Cybertruck will accomplish all of those goals that we set out at the beginning. The strongest, lightest, most durable, most powerful, most versatile, most efficient, most cost-effective, and longest-lasting pickup truck ever made, at least when compared with an equivalent modern electric truck. I'm not saying it's going to be lighter than the lightest pickup or last longer than the oldest pickup on the road, but equivalent to its competition, the Cybertruck will be a better truck because it is designed better. There's no way to skirt around that. So the real reason Tesla developed the Cybertruck wasn't just to build an EV truck and capture some market share. It was to completely revolutionize the way we build trucks and provide the world with the best purpose-built pickup we've ever seen. But what do you think? Cybertruck, best invention ever, or stupid, ugly vaporware? Fight it out in the comments below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.